What's up, tech harders? We're gonna have a good time tonight installing Image. Image is a photo cloud application that doesn't rely on iCloud nor Google Photos. So we all have a tablet or a cell phone in our life and we take pictures and videos and most of that stuff shoots right up into the cloud. But is that the safest place? Do you wanna send all of your private data to the company that you pay your cell phone bill on? I don't. So let's install Image and we'll self-host that sucker and nobody will have our data except for you, me, and him. Let's go! Man, this is gonna be fun. Here we are back on the computer and we're at image.app. We can read about Image here. It's a self-hosted photo and video management solution. You can click here on Get Started and it'll give you some documentation and you can go through and find out uh, different ways of installing. There's a quick start, you know, and you can step through here. However, I like to go over to the image-app GitHub site. And here, if we scroll down, we can read more about image. It's a high performance, self-hosted photo and video management solution, baby. Now read all the disclaimers. The project is under very active development. Expect bugs and breaking changes. Do not use the app as the only way to store your photos and videos. Always follow a 3 2 1 backup plan for your precious data. And now, here there's documentation, uh, installation. I'm going to click on the installation bit, and it requires Docker and Docker Compose. So, I have a Debian LXC container over here. This could be any computer that you're running, any virtual machine, and I'll just assume you're running Ubuntu or Debian. And the first thing that we need to do, we're logged in as the root user, we'll need Docker and Docker Compose. Let's do that. To get Docker installed, we'll do a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade just to make sure our system is completely updated. And then we'll do a sudo apt install docker.io. We'll let that finish. Okay, and now we can do a docker dash dash version and see that we're on docker 20.10.24. Okay. The way I like to install docker compose is I like to download it directly. So the first thing we'll do is enter this curl command which will download Docker Compose. I'll paste that in over here. So let's get that. And then we're gonna chmod plus x on slash user slash local slash bin slash Docker Compose. Okay, and now we can run a docker dash compose dash dash version, and we can see that we're running version 2.18.1. Okay, so we have Docker and Docker Compose installed. That's great. Let's create a new user. We can do an add user image. We'll set a password. And we'll step through all this. Clear the screen. We can ls slash home and we see our image user there. However, we'll need to add that user to the sudoers list. And to do that, we can run a user mod dash lowercase a capital G sudo for the image user. Now let's run a su image to switch to the image user, a cd to get to our home directory, and we can type sudo ls and we'll see that we have sudo access. Okay, great. What's next, daddy-o? Well, we'll scroll down and we'll go over, not the install script, we want the docker compose commands. So here we are in the image documentation. We have the docker compose commands. So let's start with this. We'll make a directory, image-app, we'll cd into it, and then we're going to get the docker-compose.yaml file with this wget command. Okay. And we'll get the .env file with the next command. We can do an ls all, and we see we have docker compose and the .env file. 
If you need hardware transcoding, you'll grab these other two files, but we don't need that on our server. Step two is we need to populate the env file with custom values. Okay, let's edit that. We'll go down and change the time zone. And for me, I'm gonna insert America slash Los Angeles. And you can type your time zone in. You can change your DB password if you like. Note only to use capital A to Z, lowercase a to Z, and zero to nine. So you can put something in like, a password, and everything else is okay. We can also edit the Docker Compose file just to search it and see. It'll be using port 2283, okay. There's a Redis and Postgres database. All right, all that's fine. We'll keep those values. Now, if we scroll down, it wants us to start the containers. I know that we're gonna have an issue because we have docker-compose up-d. And it says validating services.database health check issue. And if we scroll down here, we can see this health check start interval warning. And it tells us to edit the docker compose.yaml and we're gonna search for start underscore interval. I right, found it and we're gonna comment that line out. Now, if we run a docker compose up dash D, we still get an error. Why? Because our user is not added to the Docker group. So let's exit out of this user. We're back in the root and we can do a user mod dash AG, the Docker group on user image. And we can sue back into the image user CD. And now if we do a Docker PS, we can see that we can handle Docker. So we'll move into the image app, Docker compose up dash D. And now it'll start pulling image, baby. <laughs> Let all that data come down like the rock star you are. And hopefully with a little bit of luck, the image server will boot up and start running. Oh, baby. We're Docker sysops, hackers, gangsters, hardcore, baby. Just pulling data and starting containers. Containers are creating and starting. <gasps> and if we do a Docker PS, look at that. We can see our four different containers running on port 2283. Let's run an IPA. Now there will be a lot here, but if we scroll up and look for ETH0, we can see that we're running on 10.0.0.24. And if you remember, we're on port 2283. So let's go to our browser over here and we'll type in 10.0.0.24 and then we'll go colon 2283 for the port and let's uh, press enter. We can see our image server is running and we can click getting started. We'll have to set up an admin email. So I'll use my techcart2022 at gmail.com. That's where you can email me, baby. Give it a password. and a name. And I'll name mine Techheart Rockstar. We'll click sign up. And now we should be able to log in with that account that we just gave it. Oops, you're gonna have to put in the right email. There we go. And look at that. Welcome Techheart. Let's get your instance set up with some common settings. I'll click theme and you know I'm selecting dark baby. We'll go to the next one, privacy. I don't want the map features. It does rely on an external tile service, and I don't want to do a version check either. Let's click on storage template. When enabled, this feature will auto organize files based on a user defined template. Due to stability issues, the feature has been turned off by default. Well, let's turn that puppy on. So I'm going to select that option and you can make the choice for yourself. We have an image server running. 
It's completely empty, but it is ready to be serviced. You probably have an iPhone or a tablet or something that you have images and videos on, and you want to back them up to your image server. So I'm gonna jump on one of my tablets and I'll do a screen record and I'll catch you over there. Let's sync one of our devices up to our new image server and see if we can get it to back up all the data. <laughs> okay. So here we are on my Android tablet. I'm gonna open up my gallery just to show you that I've walked around my house and taken a few photos. Now I'll click on image and for our server endpoint URL, we'll type in the same 10.0.0.24 colon 228. Three? Yeah, that's right. And let's see if we can find that server. Please note, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi as your image server. Do we need HTTP? Let's try that, slash slash. We're connected. Now, we'll have to remember to use our same email. So for us, that was techart2022 at gmail.com. And we'll type in our password. And then let's tap login. So we are logging in to our image server through Docker Compose. If this is your first time using the app, please make sure to choose a backup album so that the timeline can populate photos and videos in the albums. And I'm gonna go up here to the upper right corner and click the cloud. Image requires permission to view your photos and videos. Well, let's grant permission. Allow all albums to be backed up. None are selected. Well, let's select some. I'm gonna select sync albums and I'm gonna select both recent and camera. And I'll click back and that shows 15 total photos and videos. And let's click start backup. Whoa, whoa, look at that. We are sending our photos and videos from our cell phone or device to our image server. Let's also remember to click the cog up in the upper right corner. You can turn on automatic foreground backup or automatic background backup. I'm gonna turn both of those on. And you have some options for the background backup. You can set only on Wi-Fi and even only while charging if you want to do it while you're in bed or whatever. And now if we click back, let's test that. We have 15 photos. Let's go to our camera. And we'll just take a picture of whatever is in front of us. So there we have one more photo on this tablet device. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to open image again. And look at that. You can see that 16th photo automatically backed up to our image server. Wow. So now I'll catch you back on our main computer. And let's see if our image server has updated and gotten these photos that we've backed up. No Apple or Google anywhere, baby. Okay, gang stars. We're back over on our image server. So let me reload the website. And look at that, guys. There's all of our photos, including the extra photo that we took at the end and the screen record that I didn't even mean to copy up here. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. That was the screen record of the tablet. But there's all of our photos that were backed up from our tablet or cell phone. Oh, look at those speakers. Those are two advents I found on the side of the road. Those are gonna get fully refurbished, guys. Check back on the channel, cause we're gonna make them things shine again. We've already made this voice of music console shine again. Wow. And a bunch of vintage lighters, Ronsons. There's a cool mini bar that I created out of an old autoclave. Oh, and look at that, a 1958 Philco predict a holiday model with a killer pinup lamp. Now this tablet doesn't take very good pictures. However, if this was from your new cell phone, you'd be rocking and rolling. But this demonstrates how image easily. Hey, who's that guy? Fast forward. This demonstrates how the image server quickly, easily, and automatically backs up all of the files, photos, and videos that you take on your cell phone. <gasps> Viva Las Vegas. So super cool. So now you have an image server running that will automatically back up pictures and videos that you take on your cell phone or tablet or device that you've set up to back up here. And you can set other devices to back up to this server. I've recently switched to an Android device, but I had an iPhone library that was very large, around 300 gigabytes. And you may have photo and video libraries that you'd like to import. And can we do so? Well, 
There are two applications that I've found to import other libraries. The first one is the image CLI. You can go grab this off of the image GitHub or you can follow the documentation here. And it uses NPM to install an image CLI application. And it has some usages where you can import photo libraries through image CLI. However, I don't like applications that I need NPM to install. So I did find another solution called image-go. It's written in the Go language and it worked really nicely on my 300 gigabyte iPhone library. You don't need NPM to install it and you can find it on this github.com slash simulat slash image-go. All links in the description below for all of this stuff. Last, let me show you my large image server. This is my actual image collection. These are personal photos, so I won't scroll through too much, but I just wanted to show you that it can easily handle 4.6 terabytes of data. So there you go, guys. Super easy to install an image server, get it rocking in Docker. We've showed you how to upgrade it in the future, and we've showed you how to sync your cell phone or your devices up to your image server. And man, can it get any easier than this? All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Tech Heart is out, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Oh yeah.